In this video, I'm going to show you how to edit the edges of your repeat pattern without starting from scratch and still make sure your pattern repeats flawlessly. So let's get right into it. So here's our repeat that we made in the last video. And let's say that we realize now that we want to change some of the elements that are on the edges. I'm going to demonstrate a few different types of changes for you so that you'll be ready for all different types of scenarios. So this element, we're going to rotate this. And this one, we're going to enlarge it. And this one, we're going to reflect it and move the position of it. And this last one, we're going to scale it down to make it smaller. So what's the best way to do that without messing up your repeat? Here's how. You're going to select the first object that you want to change, hold shift, and select the corresponding object on the other side. Now you're going to right click and select transform and very important, choose the option that says transform each. This is key. This will not work if you only choose regular transform. So now as you can see, transform each pulls up a box with all of these different options. So we already said that for this first flower, we're going to rotate it. So go down here to angle, click on your preview box so that you can see how your change will look, and then play with the angle by pulling on this line inside of this circle here until you get the angle that you want. Or if you know that you want a specific angle like a 45 degree or a 90 degree angle, you can also just type it into this box. So click OK. And now both objects on each side have been rotated exactly the same amount and are intersecting the artboard edge in exactly the same place. Which as you know from the last video is what causes the print to repeat seamlessly. So when we test it out, it should repeat without any mistakes. But we'll test it out after we make the changes to the other shapes. So let's move on to this second flower. This one we said we're gonna enlarge. So again, select the object and hold shift and select the corresponding object on the other side. Now right click, select transform and transform each to pull up your box again. Now go up to scale and you can either use the sliders to change your scale up or down and preview the changes as you're doing them. Or if you think you know how big or small you want the percentage to be, then you can type it right in. So I know that I want to make this flower 25% bigger than the original. So I'll type in 125% on both the horizontal and vertical boxes. And if you like the size, click OK. And again, both of the shapes are now 25% bigger and are intersecting the artboard edge in exactly the same position, just how we want. OK, so let's go to the next shape and the next set of changes. We're selecting this leaf shape, holding shift and selecting the corresponding leaf shape on the other side. Right click, select transform and transform each to pull up your box. Now I want to reflect this shape and I want to reflect it on the vertical axis. So I'll click on reflect Y. This is the Y axis or the vertical axis. So I like how that looks. And I also want to move the shape down a bit since the bigger flower on top is now interfering with it. So under move, I'm only gonna move it down a bit vertically. So only on vertical, I'll slide the slider over a bit until the shape is in the position that I want it to be. Now click okay. And both leaves have been reflected the same way and moved down the same amount and are still intersecting the artboard in exactly the same place. Great. So let's do our last shape on this edge. Same process, select the object, hold shift and select the corresponding object on the other side. Right click, select transform and transform each to pull up your box again. Now we're gonna make this one smaller. So go to scale again and this time pull your sliders toward the left until you find the size that you like or type in the amount that you want. And in this case, I want to make this flower 25% smaller. So I'll type 75% into both the horizontal and vertical boxes. And I like how that looks in the preview. But looking at it now, I also think that I want to move this shape down as well. So let's go to move and move this vertically only. And now I like that. So I'll click OK. And again, both corresponding shapes have been changed in the exact same way and are intersecting the artboard in the exact same place. So I just want to go back to this pink flower and move it down a bit. So I'll follow the same procedure as before and move it down with move vertical. And I think that all looks good now. Okay, so of course, if you move things or rearrange things on the side edges, you may find that now you might have to move some things on the horizontal edges as well. So just quickly, we're going to make the necessary changes to the horizontal edges. First, we need to rotate these flowers here. So following the same process, we'll select the object, 
and the corresponding object at the same time and use transform each to rotate the angle of the flowers. Click OK. Then this flower and this leaf I think need to be moved over to the right. So I can select them both at the same time and select their corresponding shapes on the bottom edge at the same time. And I'll use transform each to move them both over to the right at the same time. Then I'm gonna make this flower bunch here smaller. So let's do transform each and scale it down to 75%. Then I'll go through one other scenario that may come up where you don't necessarily have to use transform each. You can do this change manually and not mess up your repeat if you follow these steps. The scenario is what do you do in case of wanting to switch the positions of two different objects? So let's say that I want to switch the position of the pink flower bunch and the yellow flower bunch. I can do this with transform each and move, but in this case, I can also quickly do it manually by selecting the first shape and its corresponding shape at the same time and holding down shift while I manually move the shapes over to where I want. Then I'll do the same with the other shape that I want to move and now they're switched. But please note, that move is the only type of change that I might sometimes choose to do manually. If you want to scale, rotate, or reflect, I recommend always using transform each for those. Okay, so the last step is to reevaluate if you need to rearrange anything in the middle part of the artboard now that you've rearranged the edges. So I'll just rotate and adjust a couple of things here. Then when you're happy with your swatch, drag your whole edited swatch into the swatches panel and your edited version is now a repeat swatch. So let's test it out to see if we were able to make the changes without messing up the repeat. So we'll make our test box here and fill it with the new edited repeat. So check all around the areas where the repeat is supposed to join up and it all looks good. All the shapes are connecting seamlessly and you now have a flawless edited repeat and you didn't have to start from scratch. Cool, right? Okay, so let's address another problem that almost everyone deals with at some point. White lines showing up on your repeat. You think you've done everything right, but these pesky white lines still keep showing up. Well, I'm gonna show you what to do about that in the next video. Click on the link to watch, see you there.